Hi everyone, this is Mindy for Honeybee Stamps and today I have a fun card project for you featuring the Heart and Blooms stencil. So this is a four piece stencil and the stencils are clear so you can see your design through the stencil and they're all labeled at the top of the stencil layer one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to start with a piece of white cardstock cut to six by six. I added a little bit of repositionable tape to the back to hold that down to my surface. And I will be working on a magnetic station today. So I'm grabbing layer one. I'm going to line that up with my cardstock. And then I'm going to hold the stencil down with the magnets. I decided I wanted to use my distress inks today, which don't seem to get enough love. So here is a little grouping of the colors that I chose, and I'll also go through them as I use them on my card front. So for layer one, I'm grabbing a blending brush and I'm using saltwater taffy distress ink. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that ink, kind of tap off a little bit, and then start blending onto my cardstock. One of the reasons that I grabbed the Distress Inks is because I know that they are very vibrant in color. So here I'm just going with that light layer of ink, kind of blending back and forth to make sure I'm getting a good coverage of those hearts in the stencil. Once I have that done, I can remove my magnets and this is going to reveal layer one. So the cardstock I'm actually using today is Concord and Ninth White cardstock, which is super, super smooth and great for ink blending, but the ink does sit on it for just a little while longer than it would Nina cardstock. So I did kind of hit that with my heat tool to help dry that ink. I didn't want anything to smear as I was adding the other layers of the stencil on. So this is a layer two. It's going to add some detail in between the hearts. And I'm applying this with the blending brush and worn lipstick. Now, the other thing is that I am using the same blending brush for all three shades of the pink and reds that I will be using. The next color that I'm going to use is a festive berry. So this is a really nice bright red. Once again, I'm going to pick that up with that same blending brush and apply that over the open areas of the stencil. I really like using these clear stencils because you can really see through into your design. So you're kind of getting an idea how your colors are looking, how everything is lining up. So after I removed this layer of the stencil, I will admit I was questioning if I did this right. I had lined everything up in the corners, but I thought, well, we're going to follow through. I'm going to keep going to the last layer of the stencil. So I quickly just wiped up my work surface here, picked up all that extra red because I don't want that to blend into my green that I'm going to be using, which is the bundled sage. So after I cleaned up my work surface, I have my cardstock back down and this last layer lined up and I'm going to add that green color to the open areas of the stencil. Now this is where you just kind of got to work through those areas that you're not sure of. I really had thought I lined something up wrong, but after I removed the stencil, it came out so beautiful and is such a great background. There are lots of color combinations you could use for this, but my inspiration came off of the example on the back of the packaging. So always check the back of the packaging if you're just not sure where to start. Now the sent sentiment that I'm going to use today is this foil and script love hot foil plate. And there are quite a few really good ones on here. And I really struggled with trying to decide which one to use. So I grabbed my two favorites, which is the big hugs and hugs and kisses. And then I also couldn't decide on what color foil to use. So I have satin champagne, which is one of my ultimate favorites. I have this red, and then I also have black glimmer foil. And all of these would match this perfectly. So I'm taking that Concord and Ninth white cardstock once again, and I'm going to use that to do my foiling. I trimmed out a little piece of that satin champagne and I place that my hot foil plate over the foil and then I'm holding that down with the best ever craft tape. So I will go over and put this on my glimmer machine and then run that through my platinum six die cutting machine. And here is the big reveal. I'm just carefully peeling up that tape so I can reuse it. And this foiled absolutely perfect the first go around. I typically do not add a shim. I just have the regular shim and the uh, top plate that comes with the glimmer system. So here is that black, which also foiled wonderfully. You could see this, the black I do struggle with. I don't see a ton of shine to it. It looks really great. 
Um, but I just, I don't know. For some reason, I never go for the black foil. And then here is that red glimmer foil, which again is beautiful. And all three of these really would match the background. So I'm using the coordinating die to die cut out all of those sentiments. And I'm going to do that with my bitty buzz cutter. So I just made sure that all of my cardstock pieces were trimmed down to fit inside of my bitty buzz cutter. And then here are all those sentiments foiled and die cut out. So at this point, I really wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do for a card design, but I started with die cutting out my panel using the rectangle sweet stacks. And this is the largest one out of that bunch. This is going to cut it to four and a quarter by five and a half. Now that I have that die cut out, I really debated what to do. I thought about just die cutting out uh, kind of that center portion and then popping up the side with some foam tape. But I I just went for my tried and true favorite design lately, which is creating a white border, a thick white border. You could just trim your panel down and add some cardstock or foam tape behind it. But for some reason, I really like having the background kind of recessed in the background of the frame. So this is just one that I fall back to. If you ever look through your card designs and you find a card design that you just really like, go for it. Use it. Use it over and over. If that is what you like and you are comfortable with, there's nothing saying you can't keep using that card design. Before I attach anything, I had an idea to add some sparkle to my background. So I brought that back to my magnetic station and I added that layer one stencil over the top and I'm going to come in and I'm going to add some moonstone glimmer paste. This is one of my favorites. It's got a lot of shine and shimmer to it. So I just picked some up with my palette knife. I'm going to spread that over the open areas of the stencils, which a big part of it is going to be those hearts. So making sure that those hearts are completely covered and then I can kind of go through, smooth that out and scrape off any excess. Now, once I remove this, you're going to see we have this gorgeous glittery background. I almost ruined my background here. I When I picked it up, it just kind of flew across my table and thankfully it landed on my lap. So I'm going to place that off on the side and I'm going to clean up my work surface with a baby wipe and then take my stencil over to the sink and wash that off right away. So here's a quick close-up look. Watch your eyes. It's pretty shimmery of that background and I absolutely love how that came out. So I'm letting that finish drying because there's quite a bit of glimmer paste on there. In the meantime, I'm taking this frame that I created out of uh, heavy white cardstock and I added some foam tape behind that. And when I was die cutting, I had also gone ahead and die cut out a bunch of the big hugs, which is the sentiment that I settled on. So I die cut a bunch of those out of white cardstock and I'm going to layer that together with my liquid glue to cre create dimension for my sentiment. Now I'm going to temporarily just kind of place my frame over my background for right now. I'm not gluing it down just yet and I'm still trying to decide what color sentiment I want to use if I want the gold, the red, or the black. So here is my layered piece. I had decided I was going to use big hugs because I figured that was a very versatile message I could send to anybody. So here is, I believe that was the red. A little hard to see on camera straight on. And then here is that champagne and then this is the black and the black really does stand out nicely on the front of that card. But I just, I love my champagne glimmer foil. I just have rolls of it. It's one of my favorites. So I decided to go with that. I added that to the top of my stacked sentiment pieces. So now I can go ahead and remove the backing of that foam tape and add this to the front of the card. Now it doesn't matter how good I am at cutting my cardstock and measuring this perfectly. I never place this on correctly. I always have to trim off a little bit of the excess on some of the sides. Then I can go ahead and add some of the liquid glue behind my sentiment and place that in the center of my card. And I'm also going to kind of tilt it a little bit. Then I'm going to take something heavy. You can take a block or a paperweight and just add it on top so that it really sets into your cardstock because we do have kind of some texture there behind that. So I'll let that sit for about a minute or so, and that's going to finish up the card project. All my extra sentiments that I foiled, I'm going to put into the packaging that go with this hot foil set so I can use them in the future. I really love how this came out. The design of that background is beautiful. And then that elegance of just framing it with that thick white frame. I hope you enjoyed today's video.
Thank you so much for watching. I will have all of my supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thanks again and see you soon.